Hello, everybody. Sorry, Instagram was trying to tell me how to do a live video. <laughs> uh, it was walking me through all the different things that you can do. I was like, I'm good, thanks. I don't need a tutorial right now. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I hope you guys are all doing good today. Happy Friday. It's Friday. Hello. I see Jennifer here. I think I saw Sindra. Yeah, I did see Sindra. Ex pretty babe. Hello, hello. Sindra's working and lurking again today. Um, okay, let's see. I think I'm going to turn this just a little bit more so that I'm not bumping into my table. It's the toughest part about this table and getting the TV angle right. There we go. Camera angle right. TV angle. Okay, so we are here for, this is my regularly scheduled Friday Live. I go live every Friday at 12 p.m. Central Time. Um, I have just decided to start doing a um, live crochet along again. This is my second live crochet along that I've done. This is for the Dobby Cardigan, and we are on part four. So today I'm actually going to be starting on um, the second front panel of my Dobby cardigan. So I'll show you guys my progress. This is where I'm at. I've got my first front panel here. Back panel is complete and we're going to be working on the second front panel. Kat says, I was already crocheting when you went live. There you go. Okay. So today I am going to be flipping the camera around um, to show you guys how I attach. Um, so I feel like this, these are the parts of the pattern that might get a little tricky for people who are following along, especially people watching the replay. If you're watching this um, to, you know, get some tips and tricks on specifics on how to make the cardigan, um, I will be flipping the camera around in just a minute and I will attach the next piece of working yarn um, so that you guys can see how I do that. Um, I am on, I am using the print friendly version of the Dobby cardigan, which you can find in my Etsy shop. When you purchase the pattern, you get the colorful version of the pattern and you also get a print friendly version of the pattern. Um, and I am on the second, second page of the print friendly pattern version. Um, Jamie says my hair. Thank you. I hope you like it. This was one of my birthday presents. Happy birthday! Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday! So I still think I might go back and make it lighter where it's still brown. You guys can see the brown in there because they just did highlights. Uh, they didn't go all over with bleach. Um, may still go all over with bleach. We'll see. I don't know. But I've, I've missed the pink hair, so yay for pink! <laughs> Just looking at this. Oh, you're making a lot of noise. Sorry. <laughs> okay, before I start on the tutorial, I did want to remind you guys, if you didn't know already, we have released our next hook color. This is our release for March. Uh, we are calling it the Cosmos Collection. Um, we do plan on releasing more colors within the Cosmos Collection, uh, but as with the majority of our colors, once the ones that are released are gone, they are quite possibly gone forever. Um, I never say never, but at this point we don't plan on doing a lot of repeats. So if you love the colors, you want to get them while you can. Um, and we released two, two colors in the Cosmos collection to start. And I did want to just show you guys really quick so you guys can see. Um, I haven't posted about them on Instagram. I need to make a little video so you guys can really see them. Um, Let's see, let's see if I can get a nice visual for you. So this is the darker purple color right here. There you go. And this is, we do still have two 11 millimeter hooks left. These are the two 11s and here's the difference. So this one is definitely a more of a blue purple color. 
So that's the blue purple. You guys can see. So more of a blue sheen. And then up next to it, you can see the two right next to each other. So the purple color is a little bit of more of a darker purple. And then you've got the, the bluish purple. This is considered chameleon powder. Hey. Sorry. Can you do that in like an hour? Yeah. <laughs> As he keeps doing it. Um, okay. And I wanted to let you, we have the 11 millimeters and then we have the, let's see what we have left. We have 16 millimeters left. That was the size that we hadn't had for a minute. So you guys can see this is the 16 millimeter in purple. This is the 16 millimeter in the blue purple. So again, you can see the difference there. Super, super shiny. And then we do also have left a uh, 17 millimeter. This is the 17 millimeter in blue. Of course, it doesn't want to focus. There we go. And then we also have an 18 millimeter in purple. There you go. Super shiny. And then we have 19, 20, and 25 in the different colors as well. So these are the 19 and the 20. So you can see blue, purple, purple, purple. And then this is one of the 25 millimeter hooks. This is the purple, purple version. So I wanted to share those with you guys. We have already sold out of a couple of sizes in the Cosmos collection, um, but those are some of the sizes that we have left. So if you have been interested in checking out our hooks, um, you can find those in the Etsy shop now. They are live. I also wanted to let you guys know um, I have discounted a couple of hooks in the shop that have been in there for a while. Um, there is a purple ombre, a blue ombre, um, and a plain purple sparkly hook. Uh, I can't remember the sizes, but those have been discounted from 45 to 40. So if you've been waiting on uh, hooks to get discounted because you want to try out our hooks, you can check those out. Those are in the shop as well. Um, okay, so on to the crochet along. That is why we are here. Um, like I said, this is my progress so far. And I'm going to flip the camera around and show you guys how I attach the next one. So I do need my 10 millimeter hook, which is what I'm using for the Dobby. And that is over here. Okay, so I'm using one of our, this was our uh, Granny Smith Apple release. So that's the ones that I'm using. Um, and Kat says, pretty hooks. Thanks, Kat. Let's see. Make sure I didn't miss any, any um, comments. Okay, so let me move this camera over here. Let's see the best way to do this with how this arm is. I think I'm going to have to flip this. You guys are going to get a good view of out my window. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn this this way. Okay. All right. Now let's see if I can move this facing down. This is an adventure guys. There we go. Look at that. That's perfect. Okay. So now I just need to tighten up the thing that's holding this on there. Oh, that's loose. Okay. 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 Um, uh, Noble Paula asked, what size is that not in millimeters? Um, are you asking about the 10 millimeter hook? Uh, let me see. I think 10 millimeter. This one just says millimeter. I was trying to find one that actually had, I think it's an N. So here is, you can see this says 10 millimeter N. There you go. And these, this is the difference. So you can see here, this is like the boy brand um, that's not the inline style. And then I like to make the, the inline style is definitely my preference, which is why our hooks are this way. And then the pointier tip um, is much, much more helpful for me in getting through my stitches. Uh, so this is the style that we make. But yeah, so that would be a 10 millimeter in a size N uh, or letter N hook. Okay, so if we are looking, uh, let's see, I am second front panel right here. So I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see. Oh, I guess it would be, we're this way, so you guys can see it this way. Um, where did we go? Second front panel. I'm trying to read this through my screen right here, second front panel. Um, okay, so you're gonna be joining 
into either the 12th, 13th, 15th, 18th, 20, 21, 24, 26, or 28th stitch from the outer, from the other end of the body. Um, and I just realized that since you guys are facing this way, this is where I want to be. I'll move all these hooks out of the way. Okay, so if you guys can see, this is the first panel. Okay, it's just folded down. All right, so we are going to move this all the way over. So you can still see the edge of the front panel, but you can also see the outer edge. So this is the outer edge. And we're going to want to join, um, for me, and again, if you look here, this is go going by your size. Uh, so second front panel. I am making the third size right here. That is a small slash medium. Um, and so I'm going to be joining into the 15th stitch from the other end of the body, which is over here. Okay, so I'm going to count 15 in from here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm actually going to go ahead and mark that just by putting my hook in there. And I've got my new cake. Uh, if you guys have not seen, I'm using Karen Chunky Cakes right here. Uh, this pattern actually calls for two strands of size four weight yarn held together, but that means you can also use a size five weight. Uh, my gauge is a little bit bigger than my original Dobby, so this one may fit a teeny bit oversized, um, but I had already gotten started and I didn't really want to start over, so I uh, just went with it. Okay, so the reason that we join over here and not on the end is because if we, if we join here and we work this direction, then it's, the front panel is going to be slightly off from this panel. If you do it, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you're OCD about the way that things line up, um, you're going to want to start here and work your way towards the outer edge. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make my slip knot. Oh, I kind of want a longer tail than that. I'm going to come out here. All right, so I'm going to make my slip knot. And since this is half double crochet, I'm actually just going to join with a regular slip knot. Oh, and I just lost my place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. I almost went into the wrong one. So I put my slip knot onto my hook, insert my hook, yarn over, I pull through the loop, and then I pull through the original slip knot on my hook. So that is how I join with a slip knot. Then from here, I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to work my first half double crochet into the same space that I joined into. Like so. There we go. Okay. So from here, and again, I know you guys are watching from this direction. So let's see if I can work from this direction. So it's up and down. There's my join. And then I am going to be working half double crochet stitches all the way across. And I hope this video isn't too shaky. I'm trying not to bump the table because usually that will interfere with the camera. It'll get a little shaky. All right. So since I joined into the 15th stitch, I should have 15 half double crochet stitches across, which is what the pattern calls for. So once I get to the end of this one, I'll flip the camera back around and I'll just be working rows of half double crochet until the, the second panel is as long as the first panel. Uh, so I won't have to show you guys anything specific, but I definitely wanted to show that join here. So working these back towards the outer edge, which will be the shoulder, the top of the shoulder. And there is my 15th stitch. Oh, and I pulled up some, this yarn, it's a little splitty. There we go. Okay, so I finished the very first row of my second front panel. And again, don't have a good way to raise this up, but you guys can see this was the first front panel that's flipped down over the back front panel. And then you can see the space left for the neck. This is where we joined, and then I worked outside to this outside section. So from here, I would chain one, and I would turn and work back across this. Okay, so if we look here, and again, I had to make some updates um, on the pattern. This has already been fixed if you have purchased the pattern on Etsy. 
Um, if you have an old pattern, an old version that is incorrect, please let me send me a message and I will send you the newest version of the, the pattern. Um, let's see. Okay. So, uh, I've already joined after you join half double crochet. It tells you how many you need to have double crochet, which for me was 15. Uh, and then we've got, let's see, rows. Okay, so this is broken up by color. So if you're doing blocks of color, um, I am not. So I would skip all of these color changes and I would come down here and I would look at the third option. So this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. So number three says I should have 32 rows of half double crochet in my second front panel. So it'll be 32 rows long. All right, and that's what I did over here. This first front panel is 32 rows long. The back panel is 32 rows long. Uh, so I need to work 32 rows of 15 half double crochet stitches to complete the body of the sweater. And then we will be able to sew up the sides. So I'm going to flip you guys around again. We'll go on another trip. <laughs> All right, let's flip up and flip around there we go and tighten this up and then i gotta move the arm one more time but this is super helpful i know it's um i wish it was a little bit faster to work with but it makes it much much easier for me to go from one view to the other and not feel like i'm having to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff to make it work Okay, I hope that was helpful, especially if you're here, if you're watching the replay of this video, um, if you're crocheting live, I hope that was helpful too. I feel like most of the people who are doing this live have followed my patterns before, um, who are actually following along live. Um, so I don't feel like you guys need as much help um, with some of those specific things. I'm sorry, I moved this down one more time. Um, I always forget which direction is tightening on this thing. Okay, there we go. That's better. Now you guys will be actually be able to see that I'm doing something. Let's see. Okay, so, uh, but yes, I, I am going through some of the more specific things, really, because this playlist will be on YouTube. So if someone happens across it, and maybe they're a beginner to making wearables, and they're looking for a series that will really walk them through each of the steps, I'm trying to take that time during the lives to show some of those extra steps. So like I'll probably flip the camera over when I seam up the edges, when I join for the sleeves, things like that. Um, Cause I feel like that is helpful for people who are really coming in new. I still get a lot of people asking if I have video tutorials for some of my patterns. So that's really, I think this is a, this is a good way to, meet in the middle. You know, I don't have to make an entire video tutorial for the jacket. Um, and I can do it during this live session. Um, and the cat just jumped up here and he's going to shake the camera. Nope. You got to get down. You can say hi. There's the cat. This is a little man. He's not happy that I'm kicking him off the table, but you'll get over it. Go. Go. He'll probably jump back up here again. No, we're not doing that. Oh yeah, coming right back over here. No, come on, we're gonna we're gonna shut the door because you can't behave yourself. Go, 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 go. Okay, we'll see if he figures out how to push the door open. Oh, okay. Well, here we are. Row number three. So I would love to know what you guys are working on this weekend. If you have any big plans, um, if you're going to stay home and get some crocheting done, um, what are you working on? Even if it's not a Dobby, if you're just hanging out and listening. Did you have a good St. Patrick's Day? Did y'all do anything for St. Patrick's Day? Uh, I finally got to share the unboxing video from our St. Patrick's Day mystery boxes. So that was really fun. Um, posted that to Instagram and to YouTube, and I actually had a lot of people on YouTube who were really interested. I don't know if they had ever seen what was in some of the mystery boxes that we have sent out. Uh, so that was really fun to get to share that with 
a different audience. Well, thanks, Tracy. Tracy said, love my hair. I appreciate it. Uh, it was pink for, it was completely pink for, a, for, I mean, maybe a full year. Um, I got it totally bleached and lightened. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that, but I was afraid of my, um, hair getting damaged. I've, I've always, I really, really want to maintain healthy hair if at all possible. It looks a little icky today. It's the third day without washing it. Um, so it never looks at its finest and obviously it got treated. Uh, but they just did highlights instead of going all over with bleach. Uh, and I may go back and get them to go all over with bleach because for some reason I feel like the darker brown mixed in with the pink to me makes it almost feel a little dirty. I don't know why. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm kind of hoping maybe she'll trade me for hair credits for some of my cardigans because she was really interested in buying some of my sample cardigans. When it's in it, this is a new stylist that I've, I finally found a stylist here in Alabama. Um, and I do really like her. I think she did a good job. Um, the prices was price was fair. Um, but I'm kind of hoping like maybe she'll want to trade for a cardigan for some hair, hair stuff. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, it's always worth it. I don't know if you guys like to try to barter, um, but we believe the barter system is alive and well. So, okay. I think I missed, uh, okay. Hillary's hook says my hook is out for delivery today. I'm going to start my Dobby after the mail comes. Woohoo. That's exciting. Happy mail days are really fun days. Um, I have two tank tops that are coming in the mail. They might get here tomorrow. I think they got to Birmingham, but they're not out for delivery today. So I'm thinking I may get them tomorrow, but they are a new style of tank top that I am thinking about. And it depends on how they fit when I get them, but I'm thinking about adding them to my Etsy shop and having a few of my designs on them because of the summer weather here, you know, coming may not be here for everybody. Um, but I'm thinking about adding those because they have a lot more size options. So I feel like a lot of the tank tops in my bonfire shop are limited on their sizing. So I'm hoping that these tank tops work out and that they're a good quality option because I can add them to the Etsy shop and then I'll have, um, some more sizing options for tank tops and, you know, figure out which designs I want to put on them, but I think that'll be fun. And they have fun colors, so that was nice too. Let's see, I see Kat said something. Um, Kat is making a very small reversible octopus. That's interesting. Like, is it reversible like one side and then the other side, or is it reversible like you flip the whole in the whole thing inside out? I've seen the pattern that it's like an octopus that has little babies, which is always kind of weird. Like it's cute, but in a very strange, strange way. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, um, if I think it's cute or weird, but I've seen a lot of people making them and they're very interesting. So I started, um, Hobie Yarn is doing another challenge that they reached out to me for, and it's like a summer sunshine challenge kind of thing. You had to use yellow yarn, and I got to try a new yarn that I haven't used from them. That is, uh, it's the ribbon yarn, but it's a, a jumbo version of their ribbon yarn. So it's like jumbo ribbon, which of course, the bigger, the better. So I was like, I'll try it, you know, let's see what happens. Um, so they sent me the yarn and actually it's kind of interesting. A lot of people ask about Hobie yarn and how quickly it takes to ship. And this actually took like no time. I was pretty blown away how quick it showed up. Um, and I haven't done an unboxing yet, but I'm on the fence about what I want to make with it. So it's 100% cotton, so it should be something that's nice for summer and spring. Um, I don't really want to make a bag because I already have a ribbon 
a ribbon yarn bag pattern and that's the babe with the yarn bag so that's my big summer tote bag that the pattern is in my Etsy shop um, so I didn't really want to make another bag with that yarn um, I kind of wanted to try to take on some kind of apparel design and I'm thinking about going with a, quite a large crochet hook and working a side to side kind of cardigan that's a little bit longer and a little, I guess you could say airy because it is still a heavier yarn because it is the jumbo ribbon and because cotton gets heavy, you know, anyway, just it's a heavier fabric, um, especially the bigger, chunkier cotton yarns. But I'm thinking about doing that. I'm thinking about jumping all the way to like a 20 millimeter and making some kind of drapey beach throw sleeveless cardigan kind of thing. I haven't 100% decided. I have frogged three projects because I also thought about making, um, you guys know I have a romper pattern and I have an overalls pattern. And I thought about making, um, you know how they make the, the skirt coveralls? So like the skirt bottom and then the coverall top. I thought about making a pair of those and I honestly thought the ribbon yarn would be perfect for that. But the jumbo ribbon yarn is actually just a little too heavy. Um, I, may, I may try the regular ribbon yarn and see if I can make, um, see if I can make a skirt version of the coveralls. Cause I think that'd be really cute. Um, I'm also thinking about making a smaller version of my Pomona tee. So this is all thinking like spring and summer patterns. Um, I see Stevie. Hello. And Miss Basilum is here. Basilicum. I don't think I ever say that right, but you're here. Hello. I got a couple of testers here. Um, two, I think we've got some people here. I know a few of you guys tested the power puff. Miss Vasilum tested the power puff. Um, but we have the mini puff jacket in testing right now. A couple people have already finished, which always blows my mind. I feel like I'm, um, I feel like I'm pretty slow crocheter compared to a lot of people. A lot of people are, uh, very, very fast at crocheting. Oh, the yarn splitting. There we go. Okay. Doesn't split a lot, but when it does, it's really annoying. <laughs> so yeah, I've thought about doing a smaller version of the Pomona tee. So the Pomona tee was made using two strands of a um, bulky cotton, so a size five. So it would technically equal out to a size six. I have thought about doing a Pomona tee that holds two strands of a four weight together, just like the Dobby. Um, I would use a 10 millimeter hook and two strands of size four weight cotton. Um, and it would be the exact same design as the Pomona because I feel like the shape of that style T was very flattering on all of my testers, but it would have counts for the smaller hook size and the lighter weight yarn. So I don't know if I'm going to call it like the mini Pomona or if it'll have its own name. Um, but I think that'll be, I think that'll be fun. Uh, Zara Ma Maria says gorgeous colors. Thank you so much. This is Karen Chunky Cakes in, let's see what color way this is. Sweet and Sour is what this one's called. Stevie says that she would be in for that, loves her Pomona tea. Yes, and you know, I'm, I definitely want to maintain my chunky, bulky yarn little kingdom, you know, that's what I use. Uh, but in the summer, it's difficult. So I'm trying to find a good balance of things to make in the summer. And I really just want my cutoff to be like a 10 millimeter hook, you know, so if I'm making, um, a t-shirt using two strands of size four weight yarn, I could still use a 10 millimeter hook and it'd be a nice drape and fit. Um, I've thought about buying maybe some of the Lion brand Comfy Cotton and trying that and seeing how that works up as a t-shirt. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm interested to, to see how that pans out. 
Uh, but I really need to work on this uh, Hobie challenge with the jumbo ribbon yarn. Let me see if I can pull one of these out and show you guys while I'm working on this. My favorites. Let's see. It looks very similar to the regular ribbon yarn. This is what it looks like. Ribbon jumbo. So 100% cotton. Um, it didn't seem like it was any bigger than the regular ribbon yarn until I started working with it. So when I started working with it, I realized that there is definitely a little more bulk to it, but not by much. Um, it was enough for me to not feel like it would do very well for, um, like I said, I wanted to try to make a pair of skirt coveralls and it just got, it's too heavy and too holy. So the, it was, it, even when I used the smaller hook size, I felt like the holes between the stitches were just too big to make sense for something that you would wear as like a skirt. Now, you could probably wear it to the beach over, you know, which is my romper and overall patterns are, are can be pretty see-through depending on what you, what yarn you use. Um, so I considered them to be something that you would wear like to the beach, you know, um, or a lot of people as it cooled off in the fall were pairing their overalls with like leggings, which was really cute. So, you know, there's things you can do, but I always have to wear like a pair of little shorts underneath them when I photograph them. Cause I'm like, yeah, I don't need anything to be see-through with, <laughs> with the rompers and the overalls. Um, but I definitely want to figure out how to make a pair of coverall, like a skirt coverall. Um, but this is not the yarn for it. So now I've got to figure out, okay, am I going to make a cardigan, um, and just have it be, a much larger hook so that I can have a little bit more flowiness to the ribbon yarn. Uh, and it's a challenge that I'm taking on. You know, I could say, okay, ribbon yarn is not supposed to be meant for wearable. So I just need to make another bag or like a basket pattern, but no, I want the challenge. <laughs> so I will be uh, frogging my third start to a project tonight and moving to a bigger hook and seeing how I feel. Um, I jumped to a 16 millimeter hook and started making a side to side style cardigan using half double crochet. Um, but I still feel like the hook size is too small to give it enough uh, flowiness. So I'm going to bump up to maybe an 18 or 19 size and do the same thing that I've already done, like side to side, half double crochet, see how it turns out. Um, which is how I made the Pomona tee, but this one will be full side to side. So I'm making it super, super long. So it would fold over and then I'm going to have to create like the back neck panel and then make a chain off of that to make the other foldable pattern panel. Uh, so it'll look just like when this one is finished, it has the two, it has the U shape, but I would be working it from one side all the way to the other. So it'll be an interesting, um, it'll be an interesting way to see, um, cause the other problem that I have, a lot of people have issues with their chain being too tight. So when you're having to create chains within your work, um, sometimes that can throw off the fit. So I guess I'll just have to like make a note that, you know, make sure that your chain, that you don't chain too tightly or even like go up a hook size to do your chain, maybe. Kat says you crochet really fast compared to me. Well, that's, that is actually really sweet of you to say that because, <laughs> um, I don't feel like I crochet very quickly. Um, I used to crochet really fast, but I've had issues with the overuse side. Um, when I used to go to crow, um, to craft shows regularly, um, I was one of those people who would stay up till like two or three in the morning pumping out hats and scarves and, um, you know, pushing through that pain, you know, so I would have like wrist pain and neck pain and shoulder pain. And I would just push through, you know, be like, it's fine. It's no big deal. I'll have time to rest later. You know, um, I do not recommend that <laughs> to anyone. Um, you've got to take breaks. You've got to listen to your body because if you don't, you're going to end up in a situation where, you know, if you get carpal tunnel, if you have to have surgery, and then you really have to take breaks, you know, then it's, 
you have to or you'll really hurt yourself. So um, that has caused me to crochet slower than I used to, but I think it's a good thing, you know. Um, we can't let it get to a point where it's causing us pain instead of causing us to have positive uh, outcomes. It's supposed to be a positive craft. Oh, let's see. Oh, thanks, Roberta. Roberta likes the hair, too. So does Jessica. Thank you, guys. Um, little Carp. So Stevie says maybe you could foundation chain. So the biggest problem with some of those techniques is I feel like they're not always the most beginner friendly. So I try to avoid them. I think maybe if I... If I ever get around to making a tutorial on my YouTube channel on how to do the foundation chain, then I would feel more comfortable um, putting it in my patterns because then I could link out to how to do it. Um, and I also don't know if I've ever seen a foundation chain created um, off of another piece. I would think that it would maybe be the same. Um, I've always seen foundation chains created as a standalone chain versus if I had to like chain off of here and you know create it that way I don't know if you could do it off of something else I mean I guess you could I've never tried it I've only ever done it for like scarves hi Mora Mora has joined us Miss Basilicum is crocheting way slower than what I'm seeing you do here well like I said, that's a, it's a good surprise for me because I didn't realize that I still crochet quickly. I am trying to finish this second panel uh, before the live. That was my goal because then part five of the crochet along, we can sew up the sides. And what's after that? What's after sewing up the sides? It may be the hood. Let's see. If I can turn this page. Come on now. Yes, so after we sew up the sides, we'll add the hood. So that'll be part five. Maura's joining late. Can't stay, but gonna catch up later. Thanks, Maura. Miss Gasilicum, I'm also super bad at multitasking and crocheting. Listening to music works, but watching TV or movies is hard. Yes, so the patterns that I create because it's rare that I'm going to crochet and not be sitting on the couch watching TV or doing something, you know, or being able to like listen and have a conversation. Um, and I think that's why I've always steered clear of patterns and designs that are more intricate for myself. Like I don't follow patterns that are super intricate, have a lot of color changes um, where you have to really pay attention to stitch counts and things like that. Um, I feel like the patterns that I put out into the world are meant to be multitask friendly patterns. <laughs> so for instance, now once I join and start my second panel, and once I know I have 15 stitches, then I can really just go on autopilot because I just repeat the same row 32 times. Uh, so it's a lot easier for me to um, focus than if I was having to stop and change colors, which is why I love color changing yarn <laughs> so that I don't have to stop and change. And there's less ends to weave in, you know, so big, big fan of the color striping yarn. Um, but that's one of the reasons that that's one of the reasons why most of my patterns are beginner friendly. Um, because, you know, it's not just that I want beginners to be able to you know, try all of my patterns, but some of it really is because it's the type of crochet projects that I prefer. I like to be able to multitask and, you know, I don't feel stressed out about, you know, something coming out right because maybe I missed a stitch or missed a color change or missed placing a stitch marker or miscounted. Um, you know, with mine, you can actually make small errors and it's still look really great. So <laughs> I think that's nice. 
Yeah, the the other reason, I feel like I have two two main reasons that I do beginner friendly patterns and one of them is what I just said, which is, you know, I like basic beginner friendly patterns that I can, you know, take on the go and multitask with. But um I also do it because I feel like wearables because a lot of my patterns are wearables. I actually had my husband ask me when I was going to make a crochet pattern that wasn't a cardigan. I said, I don't know. At some point, you know, I have some ideas. Um, I did actually just start on a bucket bag, so that's that's possible. Um, but I also do it because I feel like wearables can be intimidating for people who are just starting out and not even just starting out. I mean, I know a lot of people who learned how to crochet when they were young and, you know, they'll be in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and have never made a cardigan have never made anything wearable outside of accessories so scarves and hats and gloves and things like that um, and I think a lot of it is this you know even if it's not intimidation it's this idea of you know I'm gonna put all this time into it and what if it doesn't fit or what if it doesn't look right or you know what if I make mistakes and you know I think I wanted to create patterns that took some of that out of the equation so that people could feel comfortable making something wearable and not worry that it's not going to turn out or that they won't be able to do it or that if they're not experienced enough, you know, I, I think everyone should be empowered to be able to crochet their own clothes because it's awesome. It's so much fun. Um, and crochet clothes, they actually want to wear like out, you know. Uh, I know my very first sweater that I ever crocheted, um, I mean, I actually I knit it. So the first sweater I ever made, I, it was a knit sweater. It was chunky yarn. Um, it was either, um, it was a pattern by either We Are Knitters or Wool in the Gang. I can't remember which one it was. Um, I did not use their yarn. I just used Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. Um... And I was so proud when I finished it, but I didn't like the way it fit, so I never wore it because I didn't like the way it fit me, you know? And that's important to a lot of people. Like, some people will wear things even if they're not extremely comfortable because it's part of a style, you know? But I've never been that way. Um, if I wear something, I want it to be comfortable. I don't want to be, like, tugging at it and adjusting it all day. Um, so it sat in my closet, and I finally gave it to my cousin who, you know, really liked it. Um, but I think we all, I, I, after that experience, I was not excited to try and make more wearables. You know, I didn't feel like it was all that great of an experience making my first one. And it wasn't difficult. You know, I don't feel like I had to put that much time into it because again, it was a super bulky yarn, so it didn't take as long, but, um, you know, it, it wasn't the best experience afterward of like, I did put a lot of time into it and I put some money into it and now I don't want to wear it. And then you don't want to take it apart because you put all the time into it. So that became my goal. I'm going to make patterns that people will, you know, enjoy making and enjoy wearing. And I think I've done that. I think I've met the goal. Okay. I am about to stop and count and see where I'm at, see how many rows I have left. All right, I'm getting there. There's quite a few. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I have 10 more rows and I have 15 more minutes. We'll see if I can do 10 rows in 15 minutes. So I did want to share with you guys, I finished my t-shirt cardigan. Um, I think I shared it as a reel here on Instagram. I know I shared it on TikTok. So if you guys want to see that, that was the cardigan that I made using the Hooked brand spaghetti yarn. It is recycled t-shirt yarn. Um, it has some stretch to it. So it's like a cotton um, nylon or spandex kind of blend. So it's got some stretch. Um, it's interesting. The fit is not, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Um, the, the yarn made it difficult, especially for the sleeves, 
and I haven't figured out what I can do to help with that, but they have a little bit of pucker underneath. I don't know if I needed to make them like larger in diameter um, or if it's just the yarn is bulky, um, but I love it. Um, it's one of those patterns that you're, if you, if you love it, you're going to love it because um, it has a unique look to it, you know? Um, so if you're one of those people who loves having like really funky pieces in your wardrobe, um, I mean, kind of, kind of like my overalls, <laughs> they're not super functional, um, but I love them. And it was a really big selling pattern because it was unique, uh, and fun. And so that's how I feel about this one. Um, and I'll show you, show it to you guys before I go today, but, um, I decided because it was a little stiff, um, I wanted to go ahead and throw it in the laundry and see if it softened up at all. And it actually did. It didn't soften up like a crazy amount, you know, it was just one wash and I did put fabric softener in the dryer. Um, I do have to say the colors faded a little bit because I did wash it on cold. I washed it on delicate cycle, but I think the hot, the heat from the dryer um, I think is what caused it to fade a little bit. I'm totally okay with that. I just wanted to see if it softened the fabric up at all. And it did. And it also shrunk it a teeny bit. And it was just enough to where I actually liked the way that it fit after I washed it better than before I washed it. So I will have to put a note about that in the pattern um, that, you know, if you're using t-shirt yarn, um, you know, you want to make sure that you choose a size that is um, going to give you a little bit of wiggle room if you decide you're going to wash it and dry it, you know, so that you have, you know, a little bit of room for shrinkage. But it has stretch to it too. So you want to make sure, you know, that you account for that. But the other thing, I had told a couple of people I was thinking about trying to put a zipper into it because I've never put a zipper into any of my stuff. And it would be a great opportunity for me to make a video about how to add a zipper to a bulky cardigan or jacket. And I know I told Ellen that. Uh, I see Ellen is here. And thanks, Ellen. I'm glad you like the hair. It matches my, matches my yarn today. Um, but the zipper, I found it on Amazon. It's a bright green zipper, which is perfect if you guys have seen this new t-shirt yarn cardigan. It has, um, it's very like, 90s Nickelodeon cartoon kind of colors. So it's like neon green and pinks and oranges. Um, and so I got a bright green zipper. So once that comes in the mail, I am going to do a video and it's going to be a video of me trying to attach the zipper because I'll have never done it before. So it should be fun. I think it'll be a fun video. Um, to see if it's possible for me to attach a zipper, uh, cause I'll have to hand sew it in, you know? Um, so I may play around with that a little bit and see, see what I can manage. But I feel like after I washed it, the zipper is going to be even better because it was, it was a little stiff and I knew that if I put a zipper in it and I sat down, it would do that like roll thing, you know, on the front because there was too much stuff going on, but I did get a two-way zipper. So that was the other thing. I wanted to make sure if I got a zipper, it was a two-way because if there was too much yarn here, you could unzip the bottom a little bit so that it would have space you, and you, then you could unzip the top. So we'll see. I'm excited. I'm excited to try and add a zipper. I hope that it doesn't um, turn into a complete disappointment. <laughs> Ellen can't wait to see the zipper. Awesome. I can't either. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a fun, fun little adventure for me to have. Okay. By the way, I have had a lot of people ask me if our hooks are good for, um, pencil grip. And since my wrist is getting tired, I'm actually going to switch to pencil grip. Let's see how many more I need. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 20, 26. So I'm going to switch to pencil grip. I'm slower at pencil grip, but I wanted to show you guys that you can indeed use uh, the R hooks with a pencil grip. 
Um, I have a few regular hook purchasers that use pencil grip and they only switch to the knife hold for our much larger hooks, which I think is universal. If you, if you are having to use like a 20 millimeter hook, you're probably not, no matter what hook you're using, you're probably going to struggle to use uh, a pencil grip on those hooks because they're just so big. And let me know if you've ever tried to switch up your grip. So do you use both? Have you tried both? Um, I taught myself pencil grip because I feel like it is one of those ways where if you are having to kind of push through and crochet a little longer than your body wants you to, it's, um, it's a different movement. So it breaks it up a little bit. Stevie says she uses both equally. Okay, that's interesting. I don't. I definitely prefer um, the knife grip, but I think some of that has to do with the fact that that's how I learned and I've used it for so long uh, that pencil grip still feels unnatural. <laughs> uh, but I think with practice, I might get to that point where I use it more often because it is good for you. It is good for you to switch things up. Um, you're using and you're engaging different muscles in your hand. Tracy said she's tried to do the knife hold, but it's hard on a pencil grip. Yes, and, and I agree. That's This was really difficult for me for a really long time, but I stuck with it. I told myself I was going to practice once a day <laughs> using pencil grip, and it has allowed me to get to a point where I can comfortably do it for, you know, for a while. I, I don't miss my stitches. I don't split the yarn any more so than I would with uh, my knife grip. Uh, but it's definitely, you know, don't they say that's, it's how you um, make more neural connections in your brain, right? You have to learn a new skill. Okay. I got a couple more rows to go. And you see, I switched to knife grip to do all of my changes. Okay, Ellen has never tried, I'm guessing never tried pencil. I think you hold knife grip, Ellen, don't you? Um, let's see. Miss Basilicum, I just tried pencil grip for the first time and it feels super weird and weak. Uh, I'm sure it's, yes, I agree. It's, um, I don't feel like I have as much control over the, the stitching and the yarn. Luckily, I, I can maintain my gauge. I don't feel like my gauge gets... Uh, a whole lot looser or tighter when I change my grip. Um, but it's definitely something where I don't always feel as in control uh, as I would when I'm using knife grip. But it's a fun experiment. I, I definitely urge you guys to just try it, you know. Um, I remember one of the weirdest experiences for me was um, I used to teach um, crochet classes, local crochet classes. And I only taught a few. I think I ended up teaching maybe three or four all in one small span when I was kind of playing around with the idea, seeing where I could teach, you know, how much I could actually make and if it was worth my time to, you know, to drive to teach the class. Um, and someone showed up to the class and was left-handed. And so I didn't want her to not learn anything, but it was next to impossible for her to try to attempt it with her right hand. So I had to break it down to the very basics and I had to try to crochet left-handed so that I could teach her just the very basics of making a chain and doing like a single crochet stitch. Um, and I was successful, like she, definitely got, you know, some of the basics down, but me having to try to do that and, you know, it felt like I was turning my brain inside out. <laughs> uh, but very interesting experience. You know, I think we should all take some time to find like a left-handed crochet channel um, and just do the first couple videos and, and just see how it goes, you know. Um, that was like when I used to teach gym, coach gymnastics for, you know, little ones and they had to learn how to do 
cartwheels both ways. So they had to do a left-handed cartwheel and a right-handed cartwheel. And usually the, the one that they weren't strongest in was an awful, awful cartwheel, but they had to practice. You had to do both, you know? <laughs> Miss Basilicum in elementary school, everyone learned knife grip. And I think that's where it comes from. I think a lot of it is who taught you. How did you learn? You know, did you, did you learn um, on a YouTube video? Did your parents teach you? And then it would all depend on what grip they used to actually teach you as to what's going to feel the most natural for you because it's what you've been doing the longest. And then your brain gets used to it and then it becomes very repetitive and you get comfortable, you know. Let's see, I do think that my gauge loosened a little with knife grip. Not enough for me to have to frog it, you know, um, but I can see it. Pebbles uses the knife hold, uh, but I'm a lefty that crochets right. So I'm guessing, did you, were you forced to learn with your right hand? So did you teach yourself to crochet? I can't remember how you learned, Ellen, let me know. Roberta, knife grip all the way. It's hard enough being left-handed and dyslexic. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine. Um, Neros Designs, trying the pencil grip now. Definitely a different feel. Yep, it will be. Tracy, knits left-handed. Ellen says, I already have weirdness going on. Stevie, I have one friend willing to learn, and of course she's left-handed. I just had to do it left-handed. Yep. Green Tea Ninja, love the hair. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, let's see where I'm at, because I'm pretty sure I'm probably over time. Nope, I got a few more minutes. Uh, so let's see, I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31. So I have one more row after this and now I'll be done. So I'm going to switch back to knife grip because it is faster for me. And I'm going to get this last row finished. And then I will show you guys the t-shirt cardigan after it has now been washed. Uh, so if you want to see it pre-wash, you can check out the, the reels video that I did. Um, or you can look at I posted a, I posted a picture of it halfway done. I had the whole body of it done. I just hadn't done the sleeves. So you can see what it looked like and you'll definitely be able to see there's a little bit more length there. Um, and it fit just a little bit bigger. All right, last row. Bum, 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 almost finished. So if you're following along, you probably have already finished your second front panel. I know some of you guys may have also skipped ahead, so you may be working on the hood. Okay, so I'm gonna count one more time just to be sure, because I don't want to screw up the count. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, okay. So let me clip this yarn and pull it through. So for me, I clip the yarn, I yarn over and I pull it all the way through to complete the end. You should now have a U shape like this. So you can see my two front panels and my back panel. And what's gonna happen is the front panels are gonna fold down over the back panel like so. And then we are going to, in the next video, we're going to sew up the sides, leaving enough space to make an armhole. And I do say in the, the pattern, and I'll, I'll go through all of that in the next video, um, I'll tell you how much space to leave. And then you will end up picking up stitches around that armhole to create your sleeves. But we actually start on the hood before we start on the sleeves. So we will sew up the armholes and then we will start on the hood. So we're getting there, part four, and we've almost got something we can try on. So that's good. Definitely takes longer, 10 millimeter hook. This is one of my, um, this is one of the patterns I have that would take the longest because of the smaller hook size. Um, most of my other patterns call for like a 16, 15 or 16 millimeter hook so you can finish it a little bit quicker. 
Um, and that would be like the Luna. So the Luna cardigan, there is a full playlist now that was the live crochet along that I did for the Luna cardigan. So that is always the cardigan that I tell people to start with. If you find my patterns, you love chunky yarn, you want to make your first wearable, I always recommend doing the Luna because now you've got the crochet along that you can follow along with live, especially if you're still learning how to read patterns that will help walk you through the pattern. Um, so yeah, that's always a good one to start with. Tracy said she loves the Luna. Yes, it's one of my favorites too. I think I have three of them now. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you guys the um, t-shirt cardigan. Let me turn this up a little bit so you guys can actually see. Yes, so if I back up, you'll see it. Okay, so get this. All right, so this is what it looks like. You guys can see all of the bright colors. You can see a bright green zipper would be pretty cool. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and let me make sure this is turned right side out. I think it is. Yes. Okay. So if I put this on, somebody said happy Friday. Amethyst Mermaid Designs, happy Friday. Oh, thanks, guys. Got a lot of people loving the hair. I appreciate it. It was so funny. Yesterday, um, I went to the chiropractor, and I go to the chiropractor like once a week right now, and uh, nobody said anything. It was just interesting. I figured somebody would be like, hey, look, your hair is pink now. But they didn't say anything, so I was like, maybe it's not that noticeable. I don't know. Okay, so let me get this out of the way so you guys can actually see. And it always tends to get stuck in my stuff. Okay, so this is what we're working with. This is the cardigan. And see, you guys can see this little like pooch right here. And I don't know if I, if I had made the sleeves a little longer, if that would have gone away or if they needed more diameter. So like if they needed more space down here, I'm not really sure. I still love it. Um, I don't really want to try to just change it because <laughs> It was a, you know, a um, labor of love to make it, and I just love the fit. So I think it'll be fun. Um, it'll have to be something that you really want. I've also thought about doing, um, I've thought about attaching yarn to the end of this and making braids that you could, like, have hanging down right here. Um, and then I'm going to try to put the zipper. The zipper's long enough to go all the way up and around the edge. Um, I don't really know how to cut a zipper, so I'm just going to sew it maybe and see what it looks like, but I would only zip it like to here, you know, but the zipper would go all the way. Um, and it's short enough after being shrunk that if I put the zipper in and I sit down, it's only going to, see, it'll only pucker a little, but it still is two-way zipper, so I think that'll be helpful. Um, but that's what it looks like. So you guys can see the back. The, 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 there you go. Yes. So I think I'm going to have the option in this pattern to make the sleeves longer because I could have added two more rows here and this ribbing would have hit in my armpit instead of being up here. Uh, and I, I may still do that. I don't know because again, I've already washed this one. Um, but yeah, this is all single crochet. This is 20 millimeter hook. I used a 17 millimeter hook for the ribbing down here and a 17 millimeter hook for the ribbing here, but the rest of it was a 20 millimeter. So I'm pretty excited and it does still have a flip. Um, I wasn't sure, I don't ever block anything, so I didn't know how that would work, but since I'm adding a zipper, then I don't have to worry about the fact that it's flipping because the zipper will hold it in place. So I think we're getting somewhere. This is going to be the next pattern that I write up. Um, I'm gonna start writing it up in the next day or so because the mini puff is in testing. So by the time the mini puff is finished, I want this one to be ready. Um, and then the next one I'm working on is whatever I decide to do with this stuff. So if you guys have ideas, if there's a pattern out there that you like um, the look of, but maybe it's done with like a super fine weight yarn, but you think it's cool that maybe it would need like a chunky version. Um, let me know because I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this um, and I would kind of like to still make a wearable because I'm loving the challenge of 
using yarn that's not supposed to be for clothing and making it into clothing. Uh, so that's the challenge that I'm trying to take on, but I'm still looking for ideas. So if you have ideas of what I should make with this, let me know. Um, and that's it for now. So don't forget to check out the hooks because they are here. Cosmos collection. Um, we still have a few sizes left. So if you like these, check them out. And like I said, I did put a few hooks on sale. So I have discounted a couple of hooks that have been at, in our shop for a while. Um, there's a purple ombre, a blue ombre, and a purple sparkle um, that I've discounted. And I think, like I said, I think that's everything for now. I don't think I have anything new to share. I think that's all. So um, if you guys want, you can join me on Tuesday, this next Tuesday, over on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will be doing part five of the Dobby cardigan. We'll be sewing up the sides, adding the hood. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and happy hooking. Bye.